Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be a video, kind of a unique video, I think. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I could have maybe put this one out earlier, but we're just gonna go for it. So this is my top 10 favorite pieces of equipment in base game. Um, again, no mods, nothing like that. This isn't my top favorite mods. Um, it's just my favorite pieces of base game equipment. So if you play base game, these are the pieces of equipment that I would recommend using and why I like them. Um, I will be doing a similar video on my least favorite pieces of equipment from base game, obviously not mods as well. So stay tuned for that on the channel as well. But let's go ahead and jump into it. So um, I'm not going to put these out on the ground or out in the game um, here. I'm just going to look at them in the store because I think that's going to be, well, for one, it's going to be easier for me to show them off. And two, it's going to be easier for me to compare them to the other things in those categories to show you why I specifically like these ones. So let's go ahead and hop in the store and take a look. All right, so the first piece of equipment I want to show you is in here in the large tractor section. It's the Fent 1000 Vario. So there's a reason, a very specific reason I like this tractor. This is my favorite large tractor in game. Um, the reason I like it is, well, if you look down here, 517 horsepower, you can get that if you go to the 1050 model. For now, you're at $367,000 for a 517 horsepower tractor. That is a very good deal. Very big, very big tractor, very big uh, horsepower for your dollar right there. So you're gonna get a lot of a lot of power for your, a lot of bang for your buck, if you will. Um, and it has a very fast driving speed. It runs at 37 miles per hour, which the only one that really competes with that in terms of speed is gonna be, it's honestly just gonna be the, the JCB Fast Track at 43 miles an hour. That one's gonna be a little bit faster, but nothing else really competes with it for speed. It's a very quick tracker, very high horsepower. Um, but yeah, if you wanted this guy 435 horsepower, it's not going to be the same there. Uh, if we look for another 500 horsepower tractor, that one's going to be able to get up there. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more. That one's actually not a bad way to go about it either. You can get uh, 517 horsepower for $373. Uh, but again, it's a very slow or 373,000, very slow tractor, and it's still more money than that right there. So again, it's just a screaming deal for a 517 horsepower tractor, and this is a very good tractor. I love using this tractor. So that's number one on the list there. All right, and number two, believe it or not, is this little tractor here. Here, this is the Buer 6105. There is not very many customization. You can get wide tires on it, and you can change the brand and do wide tires in there, put a license plate on it. That's it, that's it. But why do I like this tractor? This is, $39,000, so it's very cheap, and you have 100 horsepower. It is the best low-end tractor to get a lot of horsepower early on in the game. If we look back at the next tractor that has 100 horsepower, the only one that actually really comes close, you can see this in 95, not bad, but it's still more money, and that 75 horsepower is a starting price, so you still have to pay for the bigger engine, which bumps the price up. So again, you have to make sure you look at that. Yes, some of these will have 100 horsepower listed, like this 112 horsepower listed, but, and it's 39,500, so a little bit more for a little bit more horsepower, but to get that bigger engine, you're paying an extra $24,000 uh, here. For, well, I guess there's other options, so we don't need the three point necessarily, but you're paying $21,000 for that engine, so you're bumping the price up quite a bit um, to get that. And again, if you did 100 horsepower, you're still bumping up by 16 grand, um, 95 horsepower, again, that we're less than that. So it's very good. The only thing I would say be careful of is there's not really, as far as I know, I don't think there's any base game weight that will hook up to that pin hitch on the front, um, but it does have a three point link on the back. The only thing I'd say is be careful is try not to put too much weight on the back because uh, you might have an issue with that. All right, number three is the Helianthus headers. There are two end games. This is kind of two options or two different things here, but there's basically a small one and a large one. So you have this guy right here, 5.7 meters. And then we have this guy up here towards the top end right here. This one is 12 meters here. So you have a 5.7 and a 12 meter one. Now the big thing here is obviously to harvest sunflowers, typically you would use a corn header. All these will do corn and sunflowers, which is nice. You'd say, why do you want the Helianthus header? The Helianthus header can only do sunflower. Well, these guys harvest at six miles per hour, which is, that's pretty normal right there. But if we go back to the Helianthus headers in here, if I just go up to the big one here, it harvests at nine miles an hour. So that may not seem like a lot of difference, only three miles an hour, but over the course of a large field, that is 50% faster. Given it can only do sunflowers, but it can do sunflowers real quick. And that's why I think these are one of the things that we always forget about. So if you're gonna do a lot of sunflowers, I know these are very specific, very niche piece of equipment, but if you're gonna do any amount of sunflowers, these are very worth buying. So again, both of the Capello Helianthus headers are very good. All right, number four is a specific um, subsoiler, it's the Agrisim Cultiplow Platinum 8 meter. 
The reason I like this is it's not very much to buy. It does require quite a bit of horsepower and it's not very fast, but the reason you'd want to use this if you are playing with plowing required, this will satisfy the plowing requirement just like any other subsoil there is in here. Now this one I like because it is the biggest one. This one is not the biggest one. It does fertilize the field, however, for you if you want that, but it is only six meters. This is eight meters, so it's the biggest one and it satisfies the plowing requirement. Now, if you wanted to go to plows here, which you normally would have to use, if I go to the largest plow in here, it's more money, requires a little less horsepower to be fair, and but it does run at the same speed, but it's only six meters. The biggest plow in game is only six meters and as you guys all know, the weird shapes of the plows, it makes it a little bit difficult to work with them. But the good thing about the subsoilers is all of them, and you can see it a little bit easier in like one of these guys here. They have just a very straight back to them, so it's really easy to use these and drive them around. Um, they're much more user friendly is what I would say. So that's why I would say this is one of my favorite pieces of base game equipment. It's, it's very useful, especially if you're playing with plowing required on. So there you guys go. That's the Eggersim Cultipo Platinum 8 meter. For number five, the Kenzie 4905 or 4905 Blue Drive, $249,500 to buy. I love this planter for a few reasons here. One, 350 horsepower, not bad compared to the ones around it. It's very similar. So a little bit more, but not by much. Uh, holds quite a bit of seed and also holds fertilizer. So you can fertilize the field at the same time, which I like to do. 18.2 meter working width. Yes, it is the largest planter in game, but this guy 17.8 is comparable. So that might be an argument there. Um, but this runs at 11 miles per hour. This guy runs at nine. And a lot of these here will uh, run at 11 as well. But compared to the largest one here, these are the two that are kind of comparable. Nine miles an hour versus 11. 11 is a little bit quicker. This one also does not fertilize at the same time, which is a bit of a, a downer in terms of that. And this is a direct drill. This one is not. This one is, but again, that's much. That's a much smaller one there compared to the 18.2 meters here. This one also is a direct drill as well, but again, compared to this one fertilizing as well as, yeah, it's not very much more, it fertilizes, it runs a little bit quicker um, and is a touch wider. This is just a better planter in my opinion. So I really like the Kinsey 4905 Blue Drive. So there's that guy for you guys. Next up is actually the Krona Swadra TS970, this guy right here. Now you might say, why in the world would you like this compared to, well, the widest uh, one in game here. Usually you want the biggest, widest, best stuff in game. 15 meters, 14.7. There's two bigger than this guy, 9.7 meters. Um, and there's ones around it to 9.5, but this one is not the largest. So why would I like this one? Well, there's a couple reasons. For one, this thing is very cheap. It's only $41,000 to buy. So you're not gonna spend a lot of money purchasing this, which is great. These ones are a little bit more, but even then you'd want the widest thing you could get. So the benefit to this is it pushes all of the grass off to the right side. So as it goes down the field, it pushes it all to the right. Then it turns around and goes up this way and pushes all the grass to the right, going the opposite direction, which makes two, basically two swaths that it does. It puts it all into one big uh, swath in the middle, one big row in the middle. So instead of actually being 9.7 meters, when it goes up and down, it ends up being uh, all the grass from almost 20 meters um, there versus these guys are, they put it all into the center. So you can't have it off to the side. So those ones aren't gonna double it up. So you're gonna get a 14.7 meters or 15 meters worth, whereas this one's gonna give you 20. And yes, this is comparable here because this one will put it to the left or right, which is kind of nice. So you can do the same sort of thing. Um, and it is a little bit faster, nine miles per hour, 11 miles per hour. The reason I like this one more is, well, first off, this thing costs way more, over double the price of this thing. And this requires a little bit more horsepower, 140 versus 90. So this is easier for a tractor to pull. And you can actually use this on pretty small tractors. Uh, that viewer that I showed you earlier, that would easily pull this and have no problem. So um, yeah, really a great uh, wind drawer. And it's probably my favorite wind drawer. It's the one I use in my No Man's Land series as well. So next up is kind of a category. It's not really one specific piece of equipment, but it's all of the auto stack or auto load trailers that are in base games. So we have the Anderson RBM 2000, the Arcason Multipack D14, and then of course we have the four stack here, and then this guy here, the FSX 6372. Now I really don't use this guy, so I wouldn't really necessarily recommend this, but um, this holding 14 square bales, very useful holding um, 14 small square bales and this holding um, 24 round bales. Those are just, I don't do bales unless I can find an easy way to pick them up. So if I'm only using base game equipment, this is the easiest way to go about it. So I love these guys in base game because they make life just so much easier and I like things that make life easier. So that's why I really like those guys. All right, next up, believe it or not, is the Case IH Module Express 635. Um, it's this guy right here. Yes, it is an expensive piece of equipment, but it's honestly a really cheap way to do cotton. Um, cotton's a really good crop. The harvesters, you just hire a harvester or hire a worker to work on it. They'll just keep going to town on it. Not super wide headers or anything like that. It's only six meters, six miles an hour. It takes them a while, but they can just kind of harvest in the background while you're doing your own thing. And you don't have to worry about unloading them because as soon as they get a full bale, they just drop it off. 
The reason I like this over this guy is one, this is way cheaper than the John Deere. Also, each bale on this is 20,000 liters versus 10,000 liters. In addition to that, if we go into the actual equipment that's needed to pick these guys up, if we go up here to cotton technology, um, this is used either to haul the round bales or this is used to haul uh, round bales. Now, given, I will say this, this does hold three round bales, so that's 30,000 liters of cotton. This, however, will hold two. It's cheaper. It will hold two, and it can do the round ones as well as you'd like to. But two square bales is 40,000 liters of cotton, so it actually holds more. And then this guy right here, if you wanted the cheap way to do it, it's available. 26,000 holds one of the square bales or round bale there for you. So um, very nice. It's just a really cheap way to do cotton if you use uh, the Case IH Module Express. And cotton's one of my favorite crops, so I really like that. So highly recommend the Case IH. Next up on the list is actually this guy right here, the Mac Superliner 6x4. There's a reason I like this truck. One, it looks amazing. I mean, it seriously does. This is, when I picture like an old farm truck or a good looking farm truck, like this is what I picture right here. This thing looks great. Uh, Cause you don't need the sleeper on it. It's really powerful, really nice American truck right here. Love the look of the truck. Looks absolutely fantastic. And you can get all the different designs in base game as well, which is fantastic. Um, in addition to that, why do I like that compared to all the other trucks? Considering these trucks are actually cheaper than this, this is 110,000 for 500 horsepower, which is great. These both right here, they do hold a lot more fuel, I will say that. Now, it does look like they have more horsepower for a lot cheaper, but that's actually not true. So if I go in here and I actually upgrade the engine to get the 505 horsepower, I'm actually looking over the price of the Max Superliner anyway. So I'm at 120,000 as opposed to the 110. Same thing in here, if I get here and get the bigger engine in here, I'm looking at 120 versus, again, the 110. So that's why this truck is, I think, personally my favorite truck because it looks amazing and it's just the best deal. The man truck can't even compare, 130,500 horsepower. So. That's just the reason I really like this truck right there. And finally, my last one. This one actually might be a shock to some of you. I really like the Berthoud Bruin 4200. There's a few reasons I like this. The one disadvantage I think is the biggest disadvantage compared to the Hardy is the Hardy holds 9,000 liters and this only holds 4,200. So this will need to be filled up more. However, they both do herbicide and liquid fertilizer. Um, this one has a little more horsepower. It doesn't really matter. The couple things I like better about this one compared to the Hardy is one, this runs at 37 miles per hour. It doesn't work at 37, it works at 15, and this one works at 15 as well, so those are comparable. It drives at 37 miles per hour, so it's a little bit faster to get to fields as opposed to 31. Not by much, but a little bit. And the big thing why I like this one a lot better as well is um, it has really a lot cheaper. This is over $200,000 more to get this. Now, yes, I do know, and someone's gonna probably point it out, in addition to having a bigger capacity, it also has a wider working width of 48.5 meters. But this one, 36 meters is still a lot. And that's honestly more than you would ever need, probably, um, depending on what you're working on. Unless you're working on a huge American map, you really don't need this sprayer. 48.5 meters is almost too much to manage. Um, when you zoom all the way out, it's still hard to see the edges and it's hard to manage that big of a piece of equipment with booms on it. Whereas this one is much more manageable at 36 meters and still gets the job done really quickly. And honestly, for you could buy two of these for almost the same price as this guy right here. Uh, Cause two of these would run you yeah, what? That's just over $500,000, $520,000, just about 518 actually thousand dollars right there and that's only 30,000 ish more than this. So um, for an extra 30 grand, you could have two of these instead of buying the Rubicon and that's a much better deal anyway. So you could run one and have it work or do the other. So that is just a superior sprayer in my opinion right there. But there you guys go. That is going to be my personal top 10 favorite base game mods. Let me know down in the description, or excuse me, base game pieces of equipment. They're not mods. Let me know down in the description what your guys' favorite pieces of equipment are in base game. Um, at least your favorite one. Let me know what you love using. What's something that I didn't list in this list that you always use and why you use it? Let me know down in the description. So uh, there you guys are down in the comments. But anyhow, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and for watching.